guys, it's Tarko Cyclone FPV, um, and it is about 3 o'clock. It is exactly like 3.02 in the morning right now. I am just finishing up for the day, but I am going to get a video out there that I promise. This is regarding telemetry and how to get telemetry to your Tyrannus or your FrySky transmitter uh, using a FrySky receiver, obviously. And in this case, I'm going to be using an F4 board, and I am going to uh, try to cover two things out of this. I'm going to cover the idea that you do not have to have a hack on the RXSR in order to do this. And there's a couple things you can do on the board to in the CLI to make it work. Uh, and that comes from a customer last week that wanted to buy an F7 board. Uh, and uh, I was telling him, no, you don't have to do the hack, even though a lot of places online say you do. Uh, you do not have to if you know how to reroute your board properly um, and do some of the resource adjustments. Uh, and then also because a customer or a, a friend of mine or a guy, a customer, yes, uh, was flying today using his X90 Plus and wanted to figure out how he can get his battery voltage out to his radio. And you have to have telemetry for that. And so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, okay? So let me show you what we're working with today. Um, and let me see if I can get this to kind of, I've got to make room here because this is gonna be, I'm gonna to try to make this video quick, but at the same time, I don't wanna leave anything out. So we're gonna be using my QX7. Uh, we're also gonna be using a, um, this is a Multistar um, F4 uh, all-in-one board with ESC and OSD, okay? Uh, we're going to be using that as our board or as our flight controller and ESC combo. We've got the RXSR right here. It is already bound to my radio, so I'm not going to go through the binding steps, but if you don't know how to bind it, it's very simple. Um, but you need to make sure you bind it and you use telemetry when you bind it, okay? Um, and uh, I think that should be about it. I guess I could go ahead and bind it. Shit, I'll just bind it anyway. Well, we'll just do it all. Might as well. Um, and then the next thing you're going to see is that we have Betaflight over here, and it's ready to go. And I'm logged in already, but I'm going to go through the defaults real quick so that you can see that we're starting from scratch. Um, so I tell you what, first thing is, let's, uh, let's get started um, doing this. Now, hold on, let me just adjust my screen here because I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, I hate sometimes technology just pisses me off. All right, so let's just get started with the binding. Now, I'm going to tell you for the purpose of doing this, I'm plugged into an AC-DC converter back here so I can adjust the voltage so we can test some of the settings we're going to be messing with, okay? First thing is we're going to want to bind this, right? So go ahead and turn on your transmitter. All right, now I'm already bound, but I'm going to do it again anyway just because, okay? So let me just get to my page. Um, and what we're going to do is, okay, to bind it, you're just going to go to, you're going to get your menu, press your uh, menu option here in the center button, right? And then I'm at my screen here. Uh, this is going to be model number 34 on my list. So I'm going to press page, and I'm going to scroll to the left so I can go upwards and not have to scroll through everything. And I've got this set for number 34, which matches the model number. That's how I do it for my receivers. And I want to go D16 and channel one through 16. I hope you guys can see that. Let me zoom in just a little bit here so you can see that, okay? So I have it on D16, channel one through 16. I've got my uh, number here. That's for me to memorize, <coughs> for me to easily find. And then now I'm gonna go to bind, right? So I'm gonna go to um, over here to bind. I'm gonna click it. And I'm gonna make sure that I do nine through 16 telemetry on. Click it and listen to it beeping, right? All right, so it's chirping. And while it's chirping, I'm gonna find the bind button uh, and I gotta find something I can press it with. So here's my bind button on my RXSR. It's right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that that's pressed down, right? And you're gonna see these lights blinking. Hopefully, my hand's not covering it here when I do this. So if you'll watch closely, I'm gonna flip it on. And you're gonna see that green light solid with the red light blinking. That means we're bound, okay? At that point, I'm gonna let go, stop searching here. So I'm gonna press the center button and I'm gonna turn the power off on my uh, quad, okay? So now I'm gonna hit exit get out of my screen right here, flip my power back on. You should see my green light come up now. And there's my telemetry. There's my RSSI signal and we are bound. That's how you bind. So let's move on past that. You guys should know that by now. And if you don't, now you do. And if you have any questions, just hit me up and I'll show you because I've got some videos out there. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is remember now we are working with an RXSR, FrySky RXSR, right? Which we know has inverted uh, smart port, right? Which is supposed to not be very compatible with um, uh, F4 boards, right? A lot of them. And so a lot of people think you have to do this hack. Well, you don't. We're going to do a soft serial changeover and we're going to show you how that works, but that can be a little tricky. So pay attention and hopefully I don't screw this up for you guys by trying to explain it. Okay. First thing is I have notes here. So I'm going to try to move this out of the way. And um, we are going to go, we, first thing we're going to do actually is we're going to jump in and we're going to go straight to beta flight and we're going to look at what happens when you don't do it properly. And so I can explain to you what's going on. So let me put the computer screen up here. There we go. Okay, then let's go over here. All right, so we're in beta flight real quick. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna to go to my CLI, I'm gonna type default. And that's gonna basically set the board to where um, to where it was uh, like from the factory, okay? 
So once we're in defaults, I'm gonna go ahead and click connect again, and we're gonna start from the beginning, all right? So if people who are setting this up for the first time, here's the mistakes they make. First thing is we know we're running SBUS on UART 1. Now keep track of your UARTs, all right? And also please have a notepad uh, I'm going to open a new one here. So please have a notepad available so you can keep track of what I'm going to tell you. You need to copy and paste. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is let's go back to our beta flight. I know that on this board, for example, UART1 is going to be for SPA. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on and click save. And every time I do a change on a page, I'm going to save it. I'm not going to do five changes and save it because I like to do one at a time and make sure that things are working properly. So we're going to connect now. Now going back, we already know that we have our SBUS port set at UART1. Now we have to go tell the system we're using SBUS, right? So we're going to go to our configuration tab. Uh, I'm not going to worry about this. This really has nothing to do with me, but just because I'm, it's going to bother me if I look at it that way, um, I'm going to go ahead and tell it, okay, uh, let's just turn these off. God, drive me nuts. None of these things matter to what we're doing, but it's important that uh, it looks normal from here. I'm going to go crazy. So here we go. So let's go ahead and connect. Let's get back to configuration. And now we want to go and select and make sure that we tell the board that we're running SBUS. We're going to go ahead and go to Serial Base Receiver and we're going to select SBUS. All right, and we're going to click Save. Okay, there, that's it. At that point, now we've got SBUS going. And to test that, we can just easily go into our receiver now because we know we're bound. So let's go to Receiver and let's make sure. So we are. Okay, now look, guys, if you happen to be, um, if you happen to be on a screen like this and you see your quad doing something stupid like this, right? Please just pay attention to this. You see how it's spinning out of control? Um, that means you're probably on the wrong channel map. So just change it. I'm gonna go to TAER and click save. Boom, my quad's normal again, okay? And if you don't show these figures, I mean, my, my, my transmitter is dialed in. I spent a lot of time on this stupid thing to make sure it's dialed in. All my numbers are exactly where I want them to be. These aren't. I like this to be at 1,005 and I like the next one to be at 2,000, but that's just me. Um, but there's, my numbers are perfect as far as center subtrim. Uh, my subtrim is perfect as far as being at 1500. It's not jumping around. And my minimum throttle is at 1000. These, the, these are the values I want. So as, while this video is not discussing that, um, I do want you to pay attention to that because I've been seeing more people not focusing on that in their quad when they take off starts going all over the place. Pay attention to that, okay? But let's get back to what we're talking about. So we want to get telemetry, right? So first thing we're going to do now is we're going to go to configuration. I'm, I'm going to show you what the mistakes are, okay? Mistake is this, people come over here and they click telemetry. Bam, right, ooh, there you go, telemetry, great. Okay, now, on this board in particular, and I'm gonna zoom back in on the board real quick. If you look at the board right here, what I've done on this board is I have used a TX6 as my telemetry, okay? So let me scoot this over, and you're gonna see real quickly, this yellow wire is my telemetry wire. It's my smart port wire running from the RXSR, and you can't really see those pads because of the lighting and the stupid angle I got, but that is a TX6 pad right there, okay? So I've taken my smart port directly from the plug, no hacks, no nothing, and I've wired it to TX6, okay? So here's what happens. I've got it on TX6. Now I want to zoom out, sorry. Let me zoom out. And uh, I'm going to show you how this is going to work. So once you have that set, <clears throat> you go to telemetry, go to configuration, I mean, and make sure you have telemetry activated, okay? And so now, for all practical purposes, we should have telemetry because we have it uh, allocated. Oh, we have to go to ports though, sorry. Let's go to ports and we're gonna turn on smart port on TX6. All right, so telemetry output, smart port TX6. UART6 is TX6, okay? We're gonna click save and reboot. <clears throat> now here's where people get mistaken. So if you wanna go to your telemetry screen on your radio, let me zoom in just a little bit more. If you wanna go to your telemetry screen on your radio, you're gonna to go to, um, you're going to be on your main page. You're going to hit your menu button once and just hold down page twice. Here's your telemetry screen, right? And look, we've got two things right here, right? Two blinking things. And if I, t I have nothing else being filled in, if I say discover new sensors, there's nothing. Absolutely nothing's going to show up, okay? So it, what it's telling you is I've got power to my quad. Uh, I've got telemetry activated. I've got the port turned on. We've got no telemetry. We're screwed. Here's what we need to do. We need to reroute this properly through soft serial. And this way you don't have to do any hacks, okay? So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna tell it to stop, stop discovery real quick, okay? Now, this is where things get tricky, okay? You have got to use your, um, and I've got notes right here, by the way. You have got to use your, uh, let's see if I can put this on the screen properly, there we go. Um, your resources, and you've gotta use Betaflight properly be, to be able to do this. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to activate soft serial because with soft serial we can run inverted telemetry all day long. We don't have to do any hacks. So let's go back and connect. All right. And um, 
me see if I can get this right. There we go. Okay. So now that we're in uh, beta flight and we need to activate soft serial, and we know we need to activate soft serial, we're going to go to our configuration tab and we're going to make sure to select soft serial right here and click save it and reboot. Step one. Okay. Now, most of these boards, these F4 boards, you're not going to see the port when you go to ports now. Okay. It used to be you could see soft serial right off the bat. So I go to ports, boom, there's nothing that says soft serial here at all. It's not there. And until you activate it and assign it a, a, a resource, it will not show up. Okay. So what we do know is UART 6 is not working, so we're gonna go ahead and just take off um, uh, our smart port on UART 6 because it's not working, okay? Now, here's where it gets a little tricky, and here's where I'm gonna try to do a very quick explanation with some terrible drawings, and I'm gonna rip out the drawings I have because I thought these would work, but they suck. So here it goes. Let me just get a pad of paper and get over here real quick and try to show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so the way these boards work, and this is a very simple, non-nerdy version, okay? So let's say here's your board, big, ugly, square board, okay? And my pen's going to crap, apparently. Uh, let me get another pen. Hold on. I'll take a red one, and I'll take a black one. Okay, maybe that'll help. All right, so I'm drawing a very ugly board, and I could care less right now, but here's my USB port, okay? And here's my pads, for, uh, for argument's sake, I have a pad here, and I have a pad here. And we're gonna call this uh, TX6RX6, okay? Now, I know that most of you know what that means, but for those of you that don't, right? So you have this thing called a UART, right? All right, so a UART is basically your two TX and RX ports, right? So in this case, UART6 equals uh, TX6 and RX6. And what we know is TX is a transmit, so the arrow is always going out. Rx is a receive, so the arrow is coming in. There are very limited uh, examples of when this isn't the case, but for right now, we're not going to worry about that, okay? But for all purposes, this is what you need to remember, is that this is what we are dealing with, that Tx is transmitting, Rx is receiving, right? So what we have is we have your uh, receiver right here. So this is going to be our fry sky, uh, right? Rxsr, okay? And it has uh, power, ground, S bus, and then it has this, S port, all right, and this is inverted, okay? All right, so what we wanna do is, we wanna be able to wire this to the TX, because what we're doing is we're actually gonna send data through the board, uh, from the board to the receiver, and from the receiver, it's gonna send wireless to our transmitter, which is gonna receive the data that's sitting on our board, right? So we're going this direction, not this direction. Okay. The only problem is a UART isn't going to do that, uh, is not going to take our in, inverted signal, so we're going to assign it a soft serial. Soft serial, which is using the UART port, so let me just write soft serial here. Okay. So we have soft serial, All right. and for all practical purposes, just because I don't care if you're some kind of brainiac know-it-all and you want to correct this, but I'm just going to make this as simple as I can. Soft serial is like a UART in the sense that it's going to use the UART um, pad, right, or the UART um, address, okay? So for example, um, soft serials can work for UARTs 1 and UART 2, right? And we know that in this case, and just go with this part by the way, so we know that that means that there's a 1TX and 1RX and 1TX and 1RX, all right? We know that soft serial uh, 1 is the same as UART1, meaning you can't have them both. If you activate soft serial and you're using soft serial TX, then UART TX cannot be used. They're two separate. I mean, they, they, are, um, they are separate in what they do, but once you tie up one, you can't use the other one. So if you have an older board that uses UART1, for example, to do USB connection, then you cannot use that to do what we're about to do. But we know that we have a separate USB connection on the F4 board, so we have UART1 already available. Now, UART1, if you remember correctly, we are running our S bus, right? So we have S bus, and that is running on UART1. If you remember on the page right here, um, if I spring this over and I go to UART1 and I connect, you're gonna remember that under ports, UART1, the RX, which you can see right here, is being used for S bus, right? So remember that because that's gonna be kind of important. Now, we also know that, so this is gonna be using, so S bus is gonna be using RX, right? 
but we also know that that leaves us with UART TX, and we'll just call it UART1 TX, uh, is open. Nobody's using it yet, okay? Now, we want soft serial so that we can run our inverted easily, but we don't have a UART1 pad to solder it to. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually route it to TX6, okay? Follow me on this. So when you wanna route something, you have to look at it like a house, right? And this is how I look at it, at least. You don't have to look at it this way at all, but I do. So let's just say every pad on your flight controller, every little solder pad is a house, like in a neighborhood, okay? And every house has a physical address. So if you're like, hey, I'm coming over, all right, well, it's uh, 5546 on through Beth Lane. That's my house, right? So I tell you that, and that means that no matter who's living here, that house still has that address. No matter what, if you type in that address, you're going to that house. Same thing with the pads. So every pad has its specific address, and that's how you find it in resources. So what we want to do is, I've already wired to TX6, but TX6 is not uh, soft serial. So I need to take the soft serial address and give it to uh, TX6, right? So I need to tell it that TX6 address is gonna actually go for soft serial, and it'll make sense in just a second. So what I wanna do is I wanna change this box here, this TX6, I wanna change to soft serial, all right? So I'm gonna go into beta flight and I'm gonna tell it. Now, what I need to know is I need to know what the house address is of this thing, all right? I'm gonna show you how to do that. And sorry, if this is getting stupid, just forget all I'm saying and just watch, and then I, I can ramble and say dumb stuff all day long, and I don't mean to, okay? But what my goal was here was to show you guys um, so you don't get mixed up, because I sometimes get mixed up. All right, so first thing is, and this is why I said you need a notepad, okay? First thing is, you want to be able to open a notepad so you can type the command resource and see all the resources that are tied up. These are addresses to the houses. So if we had to describe it, everything after the word resource is the house, everything after that is the address to that specific house. So we're gonna copy that, go to our pad here, and we're gonna paste it, okay? Now, remember when we activated soft serial, we could not see the soft serial port because it doesn't come up automatically anymore. You have to assign it an address. Okay, now pay attention. So I said we're gonna use TX6. So right here in front of you on the screen, it says serial TX6. And if you remember, serial TX6 is the same as UART6, okay? But it's the TX portion of the UART. So you have the RX and the TX, and it's two pieces. And so TX6 is part of the UART6 uh, bundle, but it's the transmitting version of portion only, right? So get your address for TX6. I'm sorry, and I'm rambling here, and it's, I'm sure it's not gonna make much sense because I don't know how to do this probably to explain it properly, but we can see on the screen that TX6 uh, is, uh, as you can see here, address is CO6. So come over here and write um, TX6, or you would copy and paste it, but keep your hand notes too, because I do. TX6 equals CO6, okay? That's important, that's very important, all right? Now, we also know that we wanna assign soft serial to that, so the quickest way to do that is gonna be to type resource, serial underscore tx now keep this in mind when you use soft serial okay like you notice how you have your tx's and they only have one number after them one three six one three six when you use soft serial there's an additional one put in front of it. why i don't know but that's what they did so that's the rules okay so <coughs> the difference between a serial tx one and a soft serial tx one is that you'll have one one for soft serial if you didn't want just serial, you would eliminate the first one or the second one, whichever, you're only gonna have one digit though, okay? So resource serial underscore TX11, and there's a space here. Uh, what is it? Uh, I think it's, you don't put equals. I think you just put CO6. So we're gonna type it real quick and see, okay? So let's go to our beta flight, and we're gonna type resource serial underscore TX. Oh, be quiet space one one C zero six enter now what you can read on what the hell it wasn't on there I'm so sorry so what you can read on here and I'm gonna do that again here so uh, what you can see is I typed uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna exit out of that and not save it so you can see it I thought I thought it was on the screen I apologize I'm, I'm really screwing things up here so let's try this again 
Okay, so when we log in, we said we want to assign serial uh, uh, TX1 uh, to um, our, our TX6, right? So here we, we're going to type resource again, and there you can see I didn't save it. So serial TX6 is CO6, all right? And now we've put that in our notepad right here because we always want to have a copy of our defaults, okay? So type resource serial, whoa underscore tx and then one one because we're referring to soft serial right and then you put c06 now what you're going to see here is it's saying it's already assigned and it's going to remove that and serial tx6 has been disabled now we're going to type save now it's going to reboot now watch what happens when we get back over here now under ports all of a sudden we have soft serial and that's where we can start doing our telemetry so soft serial is our tx okay and this is what we're going to do. We're going to come over to our telemetry output and we're going to say, okay, let's go ahead and do smart port on that now. And we're going to click save and reboot. Okay. Now I'm going to bring you back the radio real quick because as soon as we did that, you can now see all of our stuff is starting to populate. And there it is right there. All of our <clears throat> telemetry is now here. Okay. Now, one of the things I would do different here is I would say, okay, let me get back to beta flight. And we want to see what our resources look like now. So let's look at our resources. Okay. We can now see that serial TX6 is gone, right? And in place of it, we now have serial TX, serial TX11. Sensor lost. Oh, shut up a second. Okay. Um, but we're also not going to be using serial tx1 anymore because that was the uart one and we're using that for soft serial so you could disable it so what you're going to type is resource let me get over here so just type resource serial underscore tx1 and because it's only one one you know it's the uart right not soft serial and just put none and type save okay i'm going to reboot and again you can start seeing the radio populating so now we're going to connect and we go to our ports and there we go, soft serial, smart ports enabled. And then our UART1, which is our serial RX1, uh, is running SBUS. And if we go to receiver, we're going to make sure that that's still running, and it is. It's working perfect, okay? So now not only do we have our telemetry, um, but we have assigned our addresses properly. God, I hope that has made sense. And if it hasn't, just forget everything I said and just do those commands, and it'll be perfect, okay? But there's a couple other things you need to know. So there's a command called set telemetry. It's set TLM, okay? If you set this, now this is where you have to play with it a little bit, but if you set it wrong, you won't have telemetry. So let's set watch this. Set TLM underscore inverted equals on. And we're gonna save, okay? Now, at that point, right, I'm no longer going to get, um, let me make sure that I'm right with this. So let me click exit, okay? And then we're gonna go back to our telemetry screen. And if I'm not mistaken, you see how we have no flashing lights here? Uh, let me see if I can show you that. So you see how we have no flashing little asterisks, asterisks, asterisks or anything, right? It's not being updated. These are the old values it had last, okay? So that's one thing that you can tell right off the bat is if you don't have your telemetry set right in the radio or in your uh, beta flight, it's not going to work. So you need to go to back to set TLM underscore, and you can hit enter just to see what the options are. So here you're going to go set TLM underscore inverted equals off and click save. Okay. Now what's going to happen is all these dots come back. Okay. And now that the dots come back, you know that you're getting your update again. Okay. So uh, again, remember that so that when you are looking at this, you can see your uh, connection and make sure that you do that. So if you do set TLM, you will see the settings. And for this to work, I have half duplex on and I have inverted off. Okay, hopefully that helps. Sensor lost. Ah, shut Sensor up again. Lost. Okay, so um, that is the first thing that we want to look at, right? Now, once we do that, I need to get out of this. I need to quit messing with it. So let me just click save and get out. And we'll get back to normal here and it'll hold here. Okay, so what we want to do now, once we get out of that, okay, so everything's holding now. We can see everything working great, right? So now let's get down to our radio itself. What we know is if you look at beta flight, if you look at your screen up there, right? And click, I'm gonna click connect and you watch it. You're at 12.58 volts and you're seeing that reading here on the screen. Now let me see if I can just do these side by side, for, for example. 
I think that might work a little bit better. Okay, so if you look at the top here, you're gonna see 12.58. And if you look over here um, on the thing, you're gonna see 12. Point. Now watch when I turn this down. This is why I'm using this. So I'm gonna start turning down the voltage. Now we're at 11.8, and you're gonna start seeing it reflect here, right? And that's what we want, because we're gonna test out a signal, a, a way to tell you when your uh, battery's too low. All right, so now that we've got telemetry working, let's get out of here and let's go to um, a settings for us. Okay, so get to your main screen and click your menu button, click page, and keep clicking page until you get to your uh, logical switches, all right? And this is just gonna be a very simple thing and hopefully this will work uh, without going too nuts on it. All right, so on the, logical, on the logical switch, what we wanna do is we wanna say just something simple like, hey, radio, when my battery goes below a certain point, tell me, okay? Give me a warning because if I'm not paying attention or I'm not looking at you, I need you to tell me that there's a problem, right? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say, okay, uh, we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna edit it. And we're gonna say, okay, the function. Well, what we're gonna use is A is uh, less than X. Now, A being the uh, battery actual reading, which is V fast reading, and the number that we're going for, which is our desired low threshold point. And I'll explain in a second. So in this case, V1, and I wanna show you this real quick. Let me get out of here. Um, okay, so let me show you what the battery looks like. The battery in this case is V fast. It's 12.74. So remember, it's line number five right here, 12.73, whatever, okay? So that's what we're using to reference for our battery voltage, okay? So when we go back, <clears throat> and we're just gonna press page to get back to the um, uh, uh, logical switches, right? So we know that VFAST is what our LiPo is telling us, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and edit this, and we're gonna say, okay, uh, we're saying that A, which represents VFAST, so if you were to write that down, it would look like this. I don't think I need the... Um, I don't think I need the beta flight screen right now, but uh, I'll, I'll leave it there for the time being, okay? So let me just, let me do something like this. All right, so remember that VFAST equals LiPo voltage, okay? That's just the most important thing that you need to remember. VFAST equals LiPo voltage, okay? So A is gonna be VFAST, X is gonna be our low threshold point. So we're gonna say when A is less than X, when the battery voltage is less than our low threshold. Uh, so we've got to select our battery voltage. In this case, we're going to select VFAST. So let me just go to full screen here, get this damn thing off. Sorry, I think that's good. Okay, so let's look at this real quick, right? So our, our function is A is less than X. Our a variable one is going to be VFAST. So just scroll until you find VFAST, okay? And we're just going to keep scrolling. You can do this with RSSI. All that. Okay, so you're going to have VFAST, no plus or minus sign, just VFAST here. Now, under voltage, the way I figured it was, and you guys may disagree, but I like to, I think this is fair. So we're going to run a four cell, right? So a four cell, and we'll do an average of 4.3 volts on that. So we're going to have 17.2 volts, okay? Um, so that's our, let's say our max, roughly, okay? And then our minimum is usually going to be like, somebody's going to say about 3.5. So if 3.5 per cell is your minimum, then if at a four cell, you know you're talking about 14 volts, right? So that's, let's just say that's gonna be our threshold. Okay, that's gonna be our low threshold. So what we wanna do is we wanna come back here. <coughs> we're gonna say variable two, which is X, and we're just gonna scroll this around until we get to 14 volts, okay? Now, do you see how that LO1 just got bold? Watch when I turn it back down. You see how it's not bold? When it's bold, it means it's activated. Okay, that means that at this point, this is already true. Okay, and that's because, and I'll show you how to do this. So let me just get this to 14 volts, my God. Three, two, one, zero. Okay, that's it. Now, you can do a bunch of other stuff here if you want. Um, like, if it's below 14 volts and it's been that way for five seconds or and something else is going on, then do this. But I'm not gonna do the end stuff right now. We're just gonna keep this basic to help you guys with this, okay? So, if this is less than this, meaning if the VFAST is less than 14 volts, then LO1 is bold, which means it's activated, okay? Which is gonna help you in a second, all right? Now you can set durations and all that. I'm not gonna do that right now, but uh, we'll play with that in just a second. All right, this is just basic. Leave it like this for now, and now hit your page button. Okay, or sorry, hit exit, exit. You've got your function here, it's very basic. You can still add more stuff if you want. Click page, and now we wanna go to special functions. On special functions, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say, okay, look for LO1, 
That's that new logical that we just made, which is right there. And what we're saying is when L01 is true, so I want to play a sound. Okay, shut up a second. I want to play a track, and I think my track will be low battery. Where is that? Low bat. Okay, there we go. All right, and we're going to click uh, exit, exit. Okay, so at this point, what we want to do is we want to check, and we can do our, um, our we can go to our, uh, our page there, and we can see, now I, it should be, let me make sure that I've got all this right. Low battery. Uh, Low battery. Low battery. This would be like how many times you want it to repeat. Low battery. So. Low battery. Uh, and this would be like, uh, I think it's like how many seconds between Low the repeating, battery. two seconds, and then Low battery. you'll have three seconds, and it'll just, Low battery. just keep doing it. That's it, should just keep yip yapping the whole Low time, okay? Battery. And then four seconds, and it'll give you intervals until you turn Low it off. Okay? All right, and once you're done, you're good to go. Okay. Low now, battery. if you don't want this to be playing, Low battery. okay, shut up already. All right. Like while the quad is disarmed, Low then battery. all right, I've had enough of you. Low Hold on. Battery. Let me just turn this off. Okay. So if you don't want it to play while the quad is armed or while it's disarmed, then you can say, okay, here's what I want. If I go back uh, to my logical switch and I'm gonna click edit, and I'm gonna say end switch. And I'm going to flip my arm switch, Low okay? And what it's going to say is, as long as this is below this and my arm switch is armed. Now, Low for me, battery. it can be anywhere, middle Low or down. Battery. But if it's up, it's disarmed. So Low I'm going to say battery. if it's down all the way, okay? And I'm going to enter and exit, all right? Now, I, I had turned this off so that it wouldn't be playing it, but I'm going to say Low every battery. four seconds I want it to play, okay? So you're going to hear it again, Low right? And it's going to keep doing that now. And what that's telling me is that I'm below Low my threshold. Battery. But if I disarm, I'm not going to hear it anymore. Okay? Only when I arm, Low battery. it's going to tell me right off the bat. Okay? So that's how you can shut it up real quick without having to deal with it. So at that point, you now have uh, your voltage. Now, you also have an audio audible warning if it's wrong. Okay? Now, um, one thing that people want to do is they want to go and they want to set their screens up. So let's go ahead and, sorry, let's go to your main screen here. Hold your menu button down and then hold page down and you're going to go to your screen. Now remember, one more back is your um, telemetry, right? And you have your RSSI and everything else. And you can do the same thing for RSSI. So if you were to go like, I should have done that real quick, so let me just show you this. So if you go back to your logical, whoops, okay, and we're going to make logical too. We're going to hit edit and we're going to say the function. If A is less than X, again, okay? So let me just, where is that? If A is less than X, get over here, you stupid. There you go, if A is less than X, our value one is gonna be our RSSI. So just scroll to you find, uh, there it is, RSSI, okay? And if the decibels are less uh, than 100, okay? There, and we're armed. Low battery. Okay? Exit, exit. Low battery. Then what we want to say is here. Low all battery. right, shut up a second. Let me go back to LO2 now because LO2 is our RSSI and we want to play track. Uh, let's play track. I think they have a low RSSI, but I don't know. I'm not really into all the, uh, let me see, low bat, I don't know. Let me see. So, Blah, 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 what would we use? Well, I guess not, so let me just, I don't have an audio for it, I guess, maybe I do, I'm just not seeing it, but uh, I don't know, let's just do too low, I don't know, okay? Low battery, too low. Okay, so let's just say too low, low means battery. RSSI is too low, whatever, okay? Too low. Now, low another battery. thing you can do is you can say, okay, when I come over here, I want, and I think this will work actually. And I think if I do play value, I'm pretty sure, and I haven't used this before, but I'm gonna check this out. So I'm gonna play the value of the VFAS, and I think she'll read it out. 12.7 Excellent, volts see, it'll tell you. Low. All right, and you can do the same thing for the RSSI, okay? Um, so that's that, all right? 
So um, you pick how you want to do it. Uh, let me turn this off. All right. So hopefully that helps you. Right. Now, what you want to do is you want to see this on the, you want to see this on your screen, right? So hold your menu key down, press it real quick, and then hold page down. Telemetry. Now you have your screen Telemetry. one, right? So on screen one, we want to use uh, let's use numbers. Okay. So we want our VFAS. All right, and let's just put our RSSI. There you go. Okay. And there it is. All right, so we can see our voltage, our VFAS and our RSSI, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna now exit. And uh, I'm gonna go back now and change all these stupid talking things because, uh, okay, so we've got our play too low. Right, and we've got our um, we've got all our stuff set here. So let me go ahead and hit exit, and I think we should be good to go. So if you want to go see your page, hold it down, right, and uh, let me reboot this because we did lose our power real quick. So let me go ahead and turn that on. Okay. Telemetry. So we've got our telemetry back. Now watch. Thirteen point two volts. Okay. Too low. And if you hold your page button down, you're going to see actual voltage, actual RSSI, okay? And you're good to go. And if you want to have it keep repeating uh, when you have a problem, then you can just come over here. 13.2 volts. And it'll drive 13. you nuts. 2 and then you volts. can do the same thing with the too low. low. She's just going to keep yip yapping. Volts until you change it, okay? Now, you can turn it off by disarming. Um, one of the other things which I think you can do here, which we're gonna check real quick and then we'll call it a day, because I think this is pretty much it, how to get the RSS, um, how to get your telemetry, is if I'm not mistaken, uh, you can go down to your duration and we're gonna say that if it lasts for more than two seconds, I believe that's what that means. So we're gonna go check real quick. If I arm, 13.2 okay? volts, two low. Too low. Too low. Too low. Okay, now if I drop it back down. Point seven volts. Too low. Now it's gonna keep going. Too low. Um, too low. Too low. Okay, so now too all right, low. already shut up a second. Too low. So let me go back now. I, I guess that's low. not that was not too really what I wanted low. to get out of it, so let me just too shut low. up a second. Let me get that back and go back here. Uh, all right, and so um, everything here actually would be it would probably be the delay So if I want to say that I dip for let's say I want it to wait four seconds now This probably wouldn't be smart, but I'm assuming this is what this will mean. So right now. I have 13.5 Okay, I have to wait four seconds Okay, so it stopped announcing it because it gave me four seconds to get out now watch if I go So like if I'm coming through there, I'm at 15.9 now. Okay, now what, what it's gonna do is, let's say I go through a dive real quick or I crank it real quick. So I drop my voltage down to 13. Four seconds have to pass. Now let's say I go back up. Okay, I made it in that window so it, shut up. So I made it in that window so it's not telling me every five seconds, right? So you know that if you punch it and go through like a, a power loop, um, you're gonna drop your voltage real quick. Well, you don't need this thing telling you every second, right? So you can do your, you can do your delay. Your delay says, Hey, if you stay in that range for four seconds or less, I'm not going to announce it. But if you stay in that range longer than four seconds, then we have a problem. We need to tell you to bring the quad in, right? So in this case, if I arm it, I'm going to turn the voltage down. You can watch. You can you can watch right here. Let me let me go to the page. Here's your real time, and I'm turning it down, right? And as soon as we get below 14, I'm going to just count: one, two, three, four. There you go. Volts. And it's going to tell low. me that I'm wrong, 13. right? But then if I Volts. come back up, it's done. Right? And Too if I dip low. back down again, and I come back up, as long Too as I made low. it, 13. I didn't make Point it in time. Seven. But as long Volts. as I make it, Too it won't low. do it. All right? So there you go, guys. I hope that really helped. I, sorry if my explanation was all screwed up. Um, I, there's a lot in here that I'm trying to put out here, and I'm screwing it up. I apologize. But the idea is how to get your RX, RXSR or whatever other receiver you have to feed through your F4 board using soft serial um, 
and allocating the resource from another TX pad or an LED pad or whatever you want, uh, allocating that to the soft serial pad so that you don't have to do a hack and you don't have to have a different board, okay? Uh, I hope that helps, really. And if you have any questions about it, please hit me up, Tark at CycloneFPV.com. Uh, I'll put, share my notes with you guys and I'll put it on the forum on our website too. So make sure to go to CycloneFPV.com and then go to our new forum and you'll see the instructions there. <coughs> um, if you have any other questions or need any videos, hit me up. <coughs> Sorry, it's about 3.45 in the morning. I'm tired. Maybe that's why I'm rambling. But uh, I wish you guys the best. God bless. Safe flying. And, uh, and uh, if you need anything, hit me up. Good night.